Hey, welcome to InventFM. This video is for designers, inventors, and engineers who want to learn how to preview their inventions in augmented reality. So today I'm going to show you how to take an STL file that you would typically use for 3D printing, perhaps, and turn that into a USD file that we're going to preview in augmented reality uh, using an iPad. So why would you want to do this? Well, perhaps you just want to simply preview your designs uh, before printing to maybe lower your carbon footprint. <laughs> or uh, one of the ch big challenges I have when I'm designing things is, you know, you're designing in software without any real environmental context. And so it can be very useful to just kind of bounce this thing to AR, augmented reality, and preview, okay, well, even though in the software I know this thing is 100 millimeters, what does that really look like on my desk, in my space, um, in the context of the full product that I'm putting it into? Um, and finally, uh, another exciting possibility is, you know, giving your customers um, a preview of what your product is going to look like in, in their space, in their home, in their workspace, in their lab, um, whatever. So that is uh, an exciting frontier. A lot of, uh, you know, the phones and tablets out there nowadays automatically support it. And a number of different e-commerce sites, for example, are also starting to build in these AR previews. So let's teach you how to leverage that. Okay, so the first rule of uh, the USD uh, file format, uh, at least for for the iPad augmented reality preview, is we need to limit the number of triangles to uh, less than a hundred thousand. And for me, this is the like this is a challenge. You know, I'm kind of a high resolution guy. I'm really into these lattice structures, um, and you can see here that. Uh, my initial STL of the space wrench is about a half a million triangles or faces already. So to cut that down to 100,000, you know, that's only 20% of the file size. We're definitely going to lose a little bit of that resolution, um, but that's what we've got to do. We've got to do what you got to do. So um, today our example is the ever mysterious space wrench. This video is not about the space wrench by the way, but uh, I just a little bit of context. This is, in fact, uh, a wrench designed for astronauts. It is inspired by outer space and imbued with inner space. Um, and perhaps we may include a, a link in the bottom for you to learn a little bit more about this if you're interested in figuring out what the heck it is. So here we go. I have built a little compound block in NTOP, I'm gonna give that away to you for free. The link for that will also be below to cap the number of triangles of my space wrench to a 900 or 99,999 um, to make sure we are one short of getting an error on our uh, uh, USD file. And uh, again, I, I'm not going to go into exactly how to do it. It's beyond the scope of this video. But here we go, we've got the new triangle and our face count is, well, one, one short of our target. So that's pretty good way to go and top. I guess one thing that I will highlight here is just check out how fast this is. Boom, it's like one second, we refresh the whole thing. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, all right, so I've exported this, I'm gonna use it later. For those of you who don't have NTOP, I, uh, painstakingly also figured out how to do this in Fusion 360. I'm going to show you very quickly uh, there. So you go to the mesh uh, tab, you gotta select the whole thing, then you gotta go to reduce up here, um, adaptive face count 99999, and then that would Oops. Well, that's how you do it. I don't know what happened. Look at this. Not fast. I don't know. We're going to brick the, brick the machine. Okay. Well, sorry, Fusion 360. You're out of here. Um, so anyways, for those of you who have it, you can figure it out. Get your mesh uh, down to a reasonable 
number of triangles. Um, and now let's move on with our lives. So I'm going to show you how to bounce the USD file in Keyshot. Uh, you can also do this in Blender. I don't know anything about Blender, but I'll include a link to a video of someone else doing this in Blender. So uh, here, I guess I cheated. I already loaded it in, but let me just show you what it would look like if I hadn't. So we will make that one disappear. We'll take our space wrench 9999 import into Keyshot. We're going to bring this material, which is my attempt to render uh, core alpha in a way that would look decent in Keyshot and uh, as you'll see sort of uh, uncanny valley half decent once we export um, to the augmented reality USD file. So I'm going to go export to USD. I've got pick my file name, save, um, and then uh, I'm not a pro with with some of these settings, but I'll say the best results I've seen so far are um, doing like 600 DPI, 32 to 64 samples, depending on how patient you're willing to be. Um, for this part, it's you know it's a uniform material everywhere, so we can get away with the geometry nodes, which is a little bit faster. Um, if you have any kind of texture on the part, I recommend doing the prefer texture nodes and then you hit export. And now we have our USD file. Um, so now you got to figure out how to get it on to, uh, your phone or tablet. I will leave that as an exercise, uh, to the reader. You can, whatever, email it to yourself, text it to yourself, drop it over airplay, whatever. Um, and then I'm going to show you here. We've got space wrench with USD file and we're on my messy desk. Oh my God. It's a space wrench and I can spin it around and oh, it's hard to spin around without changing. All right. Good thing. It snaps to hundred percent. Wow. Where did this come from? It just mysteriously appeared out of nowhere and whoa, hold on. Look at that. I just can't tell which one is reality and which one is augmented reality. Um, anyways, this is pretty exciting. So you can see here uh, what a, a, a real life space wrench and uh, an augmented reality space wrench. If any one of you can tell the difference, um, please let me know in the comments which one you think is the real one, which one you think is augmented reality one. So anyways, I don't want to go on and on and on here. That's how we, how we do it. Um, as you can tell, in terms of refractive materials, we are still kind of in the uncanny valley, let's say, of augmented reality. Um, it, you know, doesn't totally look exactly uh, the same. Uh, and I, um, you know, hope that this was a useful video for you. And I guess I want to leave it with sort of one question, which is, you know, our whole mission at Polyspectra and with InventFM, our channel here is to help inventors make their ideas real. And so I am curious to hear from you. What do you want to see? What would be useful? Uh, and more specifically, what is your biggest challenge when it comes to inventing new things, when it comes to making your ideas real? So we've got a link where uh, we'd love to hear from you uh, and ask you what's your biggest challenge and what kind of content we can make for you to help you make your ideas real, faster, cheaper, better, uh, all those beautiful things. So thanks for your time. Hope this was useful and please check out the link below and tell us your biggest challenge.